Welcome back to Let's Play Cobble Show. Here we are now. We're going to choose the next route, and I find it uh, kind of fitting that there's only one, two, three characters left, and Kenji's route ending thing only took three parts. So, we'll actually get an actual route here. Out of all three of these, I've only actually played through Hanako's route. I've never played through Lily's. I've played a bit through Shizune's, but not through the whole thing. Also, uh, I looked up about Kenji because there was this one CG I've seen of him and I was like, well, it didn't happen in Kenji's ending, so where's that CG from? And apparently it's from Shizune's route, which kind of explains how I've never seen it because I've never actually cleared a route. But anyways, here we go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, chirp, 3, 2, 1... Zero. It's Haruko! So it's going to be a route that I've actually played through, but I haven't actually seen the neutral or bad ending or anything like that. So that'll be new to me, but... Well, I haven't played Haruko's route in freaking... I can't even remember how long. But Haruko's route it shall be. So give me a moment as I load up the game and get the work through up and check what choices to go with. Because Haruko's route is coming up now. Focusing on Han Hanako, her route will actually officially start probably in a couple parts. But anyways, a moment. Alrighty then. Let us begin anew. You know, honestly, I wonder if Iwanako, the uh, girl that's in this first scene, ever like plays like an actual role where she actually appears. You know, outside of the intro. I kind of doubt it, but you never know. There are like uh, two routes that I haven't cleared before that are still left, and you never know, which might appear in a neutral or bad ending for the characters. I have no idea, but I kind of doubt it at the same time. We never actually see her face or anything either. No, at some point we're gonna have to be like, why on this? I think like, uh, for Lily's route, I'll just be like, why? Just so that we'll actually have this choice. Because I don't think this choice really affects any character routes. But, yeah, of course. Yeah, sure, I mean, isn't that normal? I'm going to on-screen it since, you know, Hanako's in the classroom and he comments on her appearance a little and stuff, I know. Of course, but not everyone likes to be at the center of attention. Myself included, I hate that. I'm probably one of those people, but I guess I should be the one to give the first impression of myself. Right, but it's no problem. Let's go with that. That is not the voice I gave you originally, is it? My heart is pounding in my chest, and it keeps me thinking about my condition as I follow the teacher up the stairs. And also thinking, I need a shave, man. This beard's getting out of hand. The third door down the third floor corridor is marked as the classroom for class free free. Mito opens the door and enters. Good morning, everyone. Sorry I'm late. I had stayed for a split second at the door, freezing on the spot. Ah, get a grip. This is a big step, I know that, but there isn't any point to worrying so much about it. At least not this soon. I follow the teacher into the classroom man, and look around partially so I won't have to meet the curious gazes of my new classmates. You know this girl right here? I remember her actually appearing, like, actually getting some lines of dialogue and actually, you know, talking to a sow at some point. But I can't remember what route it was. I thought it was Emmy's route, but she didn't make an appearance, if I recall. So maybe it's... It might have been Shizune's then, because I said I played a little through Shizune's route but never cleared it, and I do recall actually seeing her interacting with Sao at one point, so maybe that's it. So, again, we have a look at all these characters that, like, will never actually interact with except for you briefly at some point, and of course, Hanako. But it makes you wonder, like, what these characters' uh, personalities, what their story is, and all that. I mean, they're just background characters. But anyways, I follow the teacher into the classroom, look around, so I won't have to meet the curious gazes of my new classmates. 
Well, you won't have to worry about that guy. He's not really bald. It's like, yeah. It's pretty spacious. The ceiling is unusually high, and there's lots of space left over around and in between the desks. An entire wall taken up by blackboards and the high, old-fashioned windows only make it seem larger. The students' desks are just scattered wooden desks with a shelf underneath for books and wooden chairs with metal frames. Simple and efficient. I stop walking in front of the classroom and face the other students. They all look normal like students in any other school, but then why would they be here? They probably like me and have something wrong with them, only it's just not immediately obvious. Then I notice that one of the girls seems to be missing the thumb of her right hand. It's a little jarring. Well, as I've said a number of times, I've got a missing finger on my left hand, it's the pinky finger. And one of my fingers, the first finger on the left hand, is also like permanently bent forward a bit. Seriously, any time like say my brother for example talks about like when I actually before I had the operation on that hand, it's like, oh so it could bend all the way back. <laughs> I shudder at that thought. So yeah. The upside to that is it's actually surprisingly a useful picking hand. Which is why like in the past year or so is like the only time where I've actually started to right focus on using a pick and it's just like a pain in the ass to get used to because I'm so used to just using my fingers. Downside is of course when playing keyboard it limits my left hand which is a pain in the ass because a lot of freaking songs tend to have those ridiculously fast left hand arpeggios that's very hard to keep up with when you can only use like your thumb and two fingers because the finger that's bent forward a bit it's kinda useless for doing arpeggios. But anyways, I uh, get off subject sort of. They probably like me and have something wrong with them, only it's just not immediately honest and I don't know. Oh, I already read that. Despite the natural tendency to listen when someone's talking about you, I do not the teacher's speech halfway through while he introduced me to the glass. Notice a flash of dark hair and see that someone is looking at me. A girl with really long straight hair that is pretty eye catching. As she sees me looking back at her back the back at her. She covers her face with her hands as if it will make her invisible. There is one boy with a cane leaning against the lockers at the rear of the class. It's weird seeing someone so young with a cane. The little girl seems to be making some weird hand motions, sign language. She peers at me of the rims of her glasses, then goes back to whatever she's doing. She's kinda cute, so is the cheery looking girl with pink hair sitting next to her. She's really hard to miss. I don't know how I didn't notice her the moment I walked in. Please welcome our newest classmates. He claps his hands, and so does everyone else except one girl in the front row who has only one hand. I think it's that's you with them. I cringe a little, but hide it by bowing in thanks for the this applause I did not deserve. A uh, collective silence tells me that I should open my mouth now. Ah, uh, so I'm Masao Kai. And after that, my hobbies are reading and soccer. I hope to get along well with everyone, even though I'm a student. And after that, I'm being so boring. This is exactly like every self introduction ever. I should say something more, something more exciting. I end up saying nothing, and the teacher picks up from there. Everyone seems to be satisfied, even with what little I said. There were a few girls are whispering to each other, throwing glance at me. It could have gone worse. Oh yeah, I think it's when he like. Uh, I can't remember, I think if he says why instead of yeah sure why not or whatever it was, I think he like gives an introduction a bit differently where he like says something stupid and then he says like, ah oh, man that was so lame, I can't remember though, it's been a long time. Also I've never actually seen the anime k -On, I think it's called, but she kind of looks like one of the characters from it. Hmm. So, uh, everyone seems to be sad about it, yeah. I listen to the teacher as he drones about getting along while letting my gaze sweep across the classroom. Everyone seems to be listening to him intently and when he's done they clap their hands together while it feels like a weird thing to do. First row girl claps on this round with her one hand against her other wrist that ends in a bandage stump. Makes me feel a little bad. We're going to be doing some group work today so that'll give you a chance to talk with everyone. Is that okay with you? Ah, uh, yeah, it's fine, B. That's good, you can work with Hakimichi, she is the class representative. Now, proceed to skip. Bit this way, in case Haruko makes a random appearance. Wahahaha! <laughs> Didn't quite have the energetic wahahaha that she usually has.
has that. They steal the screen time for the first portion of the novel. <laughs> Stuff. She laughs a lot. I wonder what what's her story. I wonder if like she's an age round expands on it much or not. Might as well go to the usual skip because it's gonna be a little wrong choice, isn't it? Hmm, I wonder, walk through. Ah yeah, new choice here, because obviously Hanako is always at the library, so we ask about the library. Well, you know, Sao is also interested in the library since he reads a lot, but still, that's the choice you gotta go with. Oh yeah, is there a library in school? Lately I've gotten into reading a lot, so I'd like to check it out. You know, I honestly wonder though, I remember seeing a chart showing like how you get all the characters around, and it's... Seems to me that it's possible to get to a character's route, well, obviously, I've done it before, where I've just picked random choice the first time I played it and ended up with, I think I ended up with Hardico's route, like I said before, was the first route I got, because I was like, yeah, the library, I guess I must have focused on that. But the thing is, choosing the same results as Hardico's can also get you onto Lily's route, but there's like one choice that differs it, and I've never actually got Lily's route as a result because I haven't got around to it. So it's possible to, you know, just pick whatever choices you want without even looking at a walker and you'll get a route regardless. I mean, you might get a neutral route, but that's only if you really make a choice that just really screws up the character's routes from initiating like I purposely did with Kenji's ending. But anyways, so... Oh yeah, it's now library in school. Lately I've gotten to read a lot, so I'd like to check it out. Misha gives the kind of frown that makes it clear she doesn't consider reading a healthy hobby, but then speaks up her, uh, picks up her smile again. There it is! It's in the second floor! We can show it to you anytime! Not sometime. Thanks. I returned to my food while the girls talked between themselves. Misha and Selene signed back and forth, very animatedly throwing side by glasses at me, but Misha refrains from translating. Let me just check the wall through a second. Hmm, we might be stuck with these two for a little while then. Whoa, whoa, whoa! You suck! <laughs> Oh, so much for that, you son of a bitch! This is Kenji all over again, man! Back her up! Where the freaking hell was that? Move the talking about some secret ghost of a sudden. Dot dot dot. I quickly noticed the conversation is not enough to fill silence. Play around the classroom, really, but we're not the first. The dark haired girl I noticed before he slumped over her desk at the last row. She dumps a little when Miss crashed into the room with the elegance of a rhino. You know what? I'm not gonna, I, I'm not satisfied with that. Not one bit. No, no, no. Wrong, wrong. We're going to start over and skip the whole way back to there. Just, I mean, he barely even, there's barely any dialogue there. It went by too fast. So much for me being like, oh, we'll really be focusing on Hanako for a while so we can skip through that, but no! Just like bursts onto the scene and then quickly leaves. Do 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 Skip mode, spin off the game. Visual novel. Do 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 Ask about the wait. I just noticed the choices are actually rearranged each time. It seems. But anyway, ask about the library and back to skip, but in a normal way. We arrived in the classroom early, but we're not the first. That dark hat girl I noticed before slumped over her desk at the last room. She jumps a little when Mish crashed into the room with the elegance of a rhino. She shrinks deeper into her seat. I can feel her tension all the way from here, as if she were slowly turning into stone just from our presence. Mish and Susanna didn't notice or don't mind it, as they walk directly past her to their seats and begin to converse. I'm left wondering about her, even when the classroom slowly fills well the students and finally the teacher. Into the room of the school feels strange, as if my brain remembers how this is done, but my body doesn't. Once in the class, I start yawning and come to the minutes left. 
It shouldn't be this tight on my first day of school, but I should skip through it. Skippy, skip, skip, uh, skip, skip, uh, skip, skip, uh, skip, skip, we can do this, the uh, normal skip mode, from here on, uh, I said from here on out. And Gin from Bleach is the nurse. I don't know how to feel about that. And Kenji, Conspiracy Pierce, Galore. There's apparently still more that we don't know about his character, though. Well, I'm going to normal skip through this one in case Hanako makes an appearance. Wah, ha, 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 ha. My god, I wonder how that's gonna sound sped up. It sounds weird on its own. Speeding up the game in a normal way, but then they're like, hey, to the cafeteria, and then like something. Cafeteria, yes, cafeteria, yes. Stuff. The student council, they will recruit to someday. Well, they did in Kenji's thing, but. It didn't last long because we were potentially going for a bad ending, but still. Eventually, when we get to choose the routes, which I'll be the next route or the last route, depending if it's a Willy's route next or what. Skip, 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 skip. Wait. Held up. It said something about her that. During afternoon classes, the long-haired girl comes back and sits down in her seat by the word. Again, no one seems to notice, or if they do, no one says anything. I want to ask Misha about it, but I don't want to be nosy. Wait. Oh, it went right past the scene. I thought it said small talk. Maybe it did. Doo-doo. Let's go back to skip mode. And she has a point. Actually, let me just check a walk through. Yeah, next choice will be Hanukkah related. But she still has a point. Well, she has a point, so I should skip the normal way. Well, the old, you know, non skip mode way. Where you just have to spam the space bar until the scene shows up. Just to avoid accidentally skipping past it. Because that happens a lot. The second floor hallway is a common copy of the third floor one. Here we are. Wide, of course, and plain like only hallways can be with paintings on the other side of it. The problem is that the library's whereabouts are not as easily determined as one would think. Was the dialogue as he entered the scene, though? But I got one flight of stairs up and I run into problems. Oh. Oh, he was asking about that, wasn't he? Shit, I skipped through that. Uh, well, I think we've seen that dialogue before, but still, it's somewhat Hanukkah related, right? Really, really, right? Spent longer playing with the Sorry, I have to go. I wanted to go to the library. It's not closed yet, is it? She should have scratched her head and just as Misha, how hard can it be determined Well, the library is open? There's a clock right down to the wall. It should be unless the librarian is absent. Absent? Of... I think you're right, Shijan. We think the library is open. It's on the second floor. Can't miss it. Do you want us to show you where it is? No thanks. That's okay. See you tomorrow. Bye bye. One flight of stairs and I run into problems. The problem is that the library's whereabouts are not as illegitimate as one of the things. The classrooms are marked as signs, stating which class they belong to, but then there is a for of other unmarked rooms. Is the library one of them, or is it just somewhere down the hall? I realize that he runs into uh, Lily first. So actually, skip a skip. Briefly. <laughs> I mean, Lily plays a part in Hanukkah's route because they're pretty much, you know, best friends and stuff. But still. Do, do, do. You have an apple head. Ah, oh, will you stop with the apple thing? Cry out loud just because of my hair has the. Ah! Just because of the cowlick thing. Do, do, do. 
we might as well on-screen here. Well, I've on-screened the whole thing, but, you know, now I'm speeding up. It just looks like the sun's... I mean, it just looks like the sun's sunset. Seems to come as a surprise for her. I guess she must have lost track of the time. Sorry, Asawa, I didn't mean to keep you from the library for so long. I quickly moved to allay her concerns. Ah, ah, it's okay, the library's still open, is it? She paused and takes a moment to think of it. It's probably something I should have asked Shizune when I had a chance, but Lily seems likely to know in any case. True, it's open until 6.30 during weekdays. A quick glance at my watch confirms I have well enough time to get there. Hmm, I might get going in that case. It's been nice talking with you, Lily. She smiles and gives a deep nod, her hand still neatly folded on the table in front of her. It was my pleasure. Oh, come to think of it, shall I show you to where the library is? I couldn't possibly ask for more help, but I should be able to find it all right. Well, unless my application skills fail me, which they already did. Which they seem to have a habit of doing. I know that feeling, man. The other day I was going, like, to a shop and I walked right past it. To be fair, I was unfamiliar with the area that I was actually at, but still. <laughs> It's alright, I was going to be talking to the librarian there in any case, so I could introduce you. This gets better and better, it's pretty hard to deny her offer. If you're sure then, that'd be great, thanks. As she stands up to follow me, she takes hold of a straight, retractable cane that had me slipped in the handle of that ha that had been slipped in the handle of her bag on the floor. Compared to the cane the boy in my class had, Lily's looks much thinner and longer. His must be for sport, where Lily's is for navigation. Together we leave the peaceful room and enter the empty hallway on the way to the library. Side by side, my pace carefully slow to match hers, we slowly walk through the hallway. It doesn't take uh, long for us to arrive at the door to the warm looking room, apparently situated in the center of the floor rather than either wing. Ladies first. She gives an appreciative smile and gesture, taking the lead as we file in. To the left is the wooden library counter with the library proper, uh, library proper being on the right. Uh, easily dwarfs my old school's library with the distinct smell of old books giving the place an almost old world air. Uh, there don't seem to be a lot of students here, considering the time it isn't a big surprise, whether it's probably island school rounds or dorms. Yuko, are you here? She says it to thin air since the librarian doesn't seem to be present and of course Lily can't see this. What's unexpected is that it draws a reaction. Something from under the counter fuds against it, followed by a quiet wail. Ah! So the origin, apparently the librarian quickly crawls out of mouses up to extremely rigid attention. Hi Lily, how can I help you? Her voice is strained in a failing attempt to sound casual. Uh, how can I help you? That's <laughs> something I know. Uh, to sound casual, and she dropped the back of her hand. Good afternoon. What happened just now? I heard a strange sound. It's nothing. I just hit my head. See, I dropped an eraser under my desk, and while I was looking for a pencil, dropped them. When I was looking for both of them, you came and surprised me. Are you alright? I'm sorry. I couldn't know. It's okay. It's okay. Sorry for making you worry. This is nothing, I've had worse happen to me. She's quick to reverse the Lily's apologies, almost frantically trying to push aside the possibility that she could be in any way inconvenienced by bashing her head on the counter. Yes, the worst things have happened. <laughs> the girl fidgets with her fingers as Lily doesn't seem to drop her concerned expression, and then she shovels some papers around the counter for no reason. Also of note, it's apparently theorized, you know when Kenji reveals in his ending? I mean, I usually don't, you know, talk about other characters' endings or anything when on an other character route, but essentially revealed that he had a girlfriend at one point. I just theorized that Yuko might have been that girlfriend. Which it feels like it could be possible. I mean, they seem like a weird pair to, you know, be a couple, but... You know, she, like, when she was, like, you know, going on about, like, she found... Figured out the identity of the person who keeps, like, taking books out of the library, and that was Kenji. And there's the whole him not liking the Shanghai scene, it is the evilest place ever. There's a few little hints, so maybe, I don't know. The girl fidgets with her fingers as Lily does and seems to drop her concerned expression. Then she shuffles some paper around the counter for no reason. 
a little shorter than Lily, replete with glasses, freckles, and a very troubled look. She seems a fit to fit the library perfectly. Ah, uh, Lily, did you get my message? Message? Hmm. Oh, the two imported books that arrived. Right, right, they finally came. I can't believe it took so long, but... I miss her celebrations partially for managing to change a topic, I'm sure. She notices me from the corner of her eye and freezes on the spot when she does. Oh no, I'm sorry for not noticing you before. Uh, did you need to check out a book or return one? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The way she can go quickly, so quickly shift between moods is a little unsettling. He's with me, Yuko. This is a Sao, new student. A Sao, this is Yuko, the school librarian. Pleased to meet you. A Sao, right, a Sao. Pleased to meet you too, a Sao. For a second, she visibly attempts to engrave the name on her mind so she won't forget. Yuko often arranges to import foreign books in Braille for me. Would you like to tell a Sao a little something about the library? Lily's innocent suggestion is met with an expression of abject terror. I, I, please, Lily, I can't. I don't know what he would be interested in. This is too much responsibility. How it's any responsibility at all, I don't get, but her objection is so sincere I don't doubt for a second that she would rather disembowel herself on the spot than tell me where the light novels are. But... So, there are a lot of books in Braille here. I attempt to save the day by asking the first thing that pops into my mind. Well, head, same thing. It seems to work at least partially, as Yuko seems to not exactly relax, but at least look slightly less tense. Well, I think about a third or fourth of Yamaku's library as I learned Braille or audio. Makes sense given all the blind students that be here. If it's only that, how come this library is so big in the first place? Um, well, we get a lot of new books regularly because the library is adequately endowed. In the, oh, that's probably why. They spend more on new books than on my salary and then I have to organize and challenge all of them. It's so troublesome and they weigh so much, I wish I could quit this job. A very awkward silence follows this revelation of too much information. Um, I'll go check the aisles then, if you don't mind. It's probably best for all of us if she doesn't keep talking to me. Very well, meanwhile, Yuko, I would have those books if it's alright with you. My first impression was right. The library is surprisingly big. Ambling down the narrow aisles, I study the spines of the books in random order, occasionally sliding one out to read the blurb, taking it with me if it looks good. In a few moments, I have res a very respectable stack of books in my arms. I guess I'll never be stuck for choice in here. The mild view of the library sinks in. Sure, there are large print and braille books scattered throughout, but it is what it is, a library. As if the calm mood from the room I had tea with Lily is... in snuck with us in here, or I said to begin with. Something about that book near the ease, just like before. I reach the end of the aisle and find a collection of desks set up for study or personal reading. Go to the floor, I discover a nice quiet corner at the back. While the rest of the library has the odd student sitting at a desk, Kyla reading or stealthily sleeping, the back is pretty much deserted. As I glance around, I see someone who I recognize sitting on one of several beanbags. It's the dark-haired girl from my class, the one who snuck out of the classroom earlier. She's reading the book, keeping it close to her face, which makes her look like she's really into it. From the way she was acting today, I had her pegged as more of a delinquent than a bookworm. In fact, her mysterious disappearance from the room raised all sorts of buys in my head. Intrigue floats slowly but surely towards the surface, and before I know it, I'm walking towards the mysterious long head girl. I guess there's no harm in introducing myself as I would with anyone else. She's a classmate, after all. Walking home to an old beanbag, I take a seat and lay my books beside it. The girl starts looking scaredly up at me from underneath her fringe. This is the first time I've seen her this close. Underneath her long dead spangs, I can see that part of her face, at least third if not uh, half, is pretty bad at scarred. My eyes are immediately drawn to the scars, subconsciously peeking past her hair until they meet her own eyes. In a second, I'm shocked and avert my eyes to the book in her hands before I realize that looking away probably only makes it worse. It takes too many seconds to collect myself and remember what I walked up to her for. Ah, uh, Sorry, I didn't mean to start with you. It, it's, it's okay. The girl certainly doesn't look like it's okay, but I let it slide. You know, I haven't had to voice Hanako much at all so far, so I haven't really given her any distinct character voice or anything. So, um, if I 
sit here. She seems to be very uncertain whether it's okay or not for me to sit, but finally she nods just a little bit. Okay. I take the seat next to her and she hides herself behind her book. Life of Pi. Never heard of it. So, uh, sorry again for stopping you, I'm Sam. She looks up from the book, stalling a little before replying. I, I know. We're in the same, same class. Her speech is stilted and so quiet that it's barely audible even I'm still angry. Somehow I think that my delinquent impression of her was wrong. No shit. Uh, Hariko, Hariko. <laughs> Where is that out there, Hariko? I resist the urge to say that's a nice name just to have something to say, but really, it's the only thing that I can think of. I feel like an idiot. Everyone here must be used to being different to each other, and here I am being all bald and fussed about this, that kind of thing. Uh, don't let me interrupt your reading. I'll just check these books if you don't mind. She nods a little and sighs a little sigh of relief. So I try to read the covers and, introduction, and the introductions of the books I picked up, and she buries her face in her book. Uncomfortable silence consumes us. My eyes still wander to her direction, and I sneak peeks at her flowing hair and the scars it's hiding. After a while, I realize that she's doing the same and only pretend to have seen life by. Her gaze is not inquisitive at all, though. It darts around like a scared rabbit. When our gazes finally meet, the chain reaction is unstoppable. She stands up forcefully from the beanbag and takes a deep breath. I... 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 I've got to do something! Without warning, Hanako takes off and runs towards the counter. Her hair-like takeoff catches me so off guard that I don't manage to go after her until she has a good head of sorts. By the time I reach the counter, she is nowhere to be seen. Lilia and Yuko are happily chatting away. Knowing that I won't be able to catch Hanako myself, I approach the girls. Hey, did you see her? Uh, notice a girl running last year? Uh, maybe. What did she look like? Uh, long dark hair. Kind of shy she had. Well, some scars on her face. You wouldn't be talking about Hanako, would you? Yeah, that's her. I saw her reading and tried to talk to her, but I think I scared her off or something. Oh dear, Yuko, would you excuse me? I had better try and find her. Uh, sure, I'll just hold on to these until you come back. Um, what's going on? I'm sorry, but I'll have to explain it to you some other time. Right, I'll see you later then. Lily hastily grabs her cane and hurries out of the library, leaving me alone with you. I don't think I'll ever get the hang of this place. Did I do something wrong? What did you do? Nothing, I was just looking for some books and then she got this, uh, fit and ran off. Most of anything I can think of was that I might have looked at her general direction a few times. Well, she is a very timid girl. You have to be very careful around her. She could be very jumpy, I think, and she's not accustomed to talking with other people. Isn't that a bit strange? I wonder, it's just how she is, I think. Yuka doesn't sound all that convincing. Then again, maybe this is just the norm around here. Like I said last time I went through this scene, I'm crap at talking to people as well. Everyone has their own problems, or else they wouldn't be here. But how should I deal with these people? Force myself to act overly casual, and it makes me feel phony. Like I was supposed to be ignoring the elephant in the room. Ah, my ear. Yuka fidgets, looking like she wants to say something to that, but resists it. I think it's an elephant only if you feel that way. I uh, guess she doesn't have a good sense of self restraint. It makes me smile, and she blushes heavily. What? Did, did that sound stupid? I don't know, it sounded really wise. I guess you're right, it's more about me than anybody else. All of us has anything to add, so you can feel the silence by shuffling some papers around. People who have papers on it just really like doing that. Like people on the news. I mean, don't watch the news, I mean, whenever it's to do with the news, I read the news rather than, you know, watch the news. But that's always the case on now, isn't it? You just see them shuffling their papers. It's just like, just bored, just like, okay, I've done my bit of the reporting on news, there's nothing else to do, I'll just shuffle papers around or something. Did you find any books? I should be closing soon. I mean, this library should be closing, but I have to do it. I hope that's not too inconvenient for you. Oh yeah, I want some books, but I left them over there because, uh, I'll just go get them. I have my stack of books from beside the beanbank where Hanzo and I were sitting and returned to the camp. Wow, you read a lot, don't you? 
I surprised myself with that too, honestly. At least when I really think about it. I had a lot of free time earlier this year, so I just kind of started reading books to fill that time. Couldn't do much else. I see. But she doesn't say anything else and just checks out my book for me. <clears throat> I guess this is what they call tact. Holding library books with one arm, I troll my pocket for the key to the door. A sudden sound from behind startles me, making me nearly drop the books I'm carrying or the key that I almost managed to get into the lock. Who is it? I turn around to see who's talking to me. It's Kenji. He seems to be in a friendly mood, although the light squinting off his glasses in the dark gives him a sinister look. I can just picture it, man. If this was animated, it I can just see that totally in that scene. It's just me. This makes him pause and lick his lips nervously. Who's me? I don't know anyone called me. Are you some new guy yet? His voice is suddenly strained and quick. Yes, but we met Paul yesterday. I don't think so. I wouldn't remember someone who I met only yesterday. When was that? What day is it today? I tried to ignore him. Is he joking or what? Prove that we met before. You live across the hall. You're a Kenji. It's like a damn siren, that bird is. Kenji jumps back, his eyes filled with an uncomprehending fear. How do you know my name? Damn! This can only mean one of two things. Oh, we have men, and you tell the truth, and I just can't remember it. But you're a spy! He pauses. A psychic spy! His eyes start around me, trying to sneak into my room, although it's hard to believe he can see anything through those thick glasses. His mood swung from friendly to manic in less than a minute. I am not psychic. How do I know that? I'm not a mind reader. Kenji points a finger in my face damningly. Unlike you! Stop that, man. We met yesterday. What's wrong with you? I live in this room. Lies! If you think you can pass this sound because I'm legally blind, you are solely mistaken. You don't even look like him. I mean, resemblance is real, real slim. Maybe at a distance, but who do you think you're kidding? I want to grab him by the shoulders and shake him. So really, I rub my eyes and let out a heavy sigh. Stay there! Kenji comes closer one careful step at a time. I see he still least he assault me physically, although I doubt he could do much damage even if he did. Oh wait, I see it now. Damn, it really is you. Sign again, and then once again, for good measure, I step backwards just in case. What's up, man? You don't look too good. I think something wrong? I don't know. We just had something stupid happen to me. A few stupid things, actually. Let's <laughs> got this one. You can't get a proper touch on all the people here, and I have no idea if it's because of me or because of them. I don't know why I'm telling this to Kenji. It's not like we had any contact either. That's rough, dude. Yeah, I'm sorry about calling your psychic spy and all, but you can never be too careful. It's a hard reality to live in. And slowly so starting to think that Kenji isn't necessarily living in the same reality as the rest of us. See? This is how it is. This world. There's no justice, you see? Even when I lose, I win, because I don't lose a lesson. What does that even mean? It doesn't matter. He dismisses it flatly with a wave of his hand. So, what happened? Why a long face? You have a long face? Eh, hey, it's nothing. I just scared some girl off accidentally. Literally, too, she actually ran away from me. It was my fault, really. I think I'm not really used to all this yet. A girl? A cute one. Cute? That's a hard question. She had a nice body and really beautiful hair, but the face. Again, with that comment. I guess it could go either way. Uh, yeah, cute, I guess. I knew it! There are a lot of cute girls here, strangely disboring about. I believe this is one of the dark secrets of this school. I tried to warn you, man, but did you listen? I don't remember any such warning. Dark secrets? Yes, dark secrets, extremely dark, like a black hole. Have you noticed that the number of girls in this school is slightly but significantly higher than the number of boys? It's like 60-40. He turns his head to the left and stares off into the distance at nothing. Why is he like this? I mean, to the untrained eye, it doesn't appear to be that bad, but that's a full 20%. One would think that a school with such a huge pool of women would be a mad dream, but no! What I'm about to tell you could be... it could blow your mind. Are you ready? I don't know where this is going, but I think I wouldn't be missing much by cutting out now. No, I'm not ready. I only get as far as turning the door knob before Kenji starts talking again, showing that he doesn't really care or if my mind is blown or not. I believe that this school is a battleground, a site of a feminist infiltration. 
This is the brother's, uh, this, this brother in the numbers of men to women is a clear sign of how far they have come. Here's this cold word, whole war turns hot, they will have superiority in numbers. Just another skirmish in the eternal war against the force of the feminists. They're everywhere. In Japan, women outnumber men. It's not a 60-40 split, but it's only a matter of time. <laughs> Even in America, women are the majority by a hair. They're building up their numbers in the past. Uh, building up their numbers. In the past, the build-up of a military has always been the clear sign of imminent war. Japan is just the first step. Our economy is badass, and the country itself is small and isolated. Yet a huge part of the Pacific in terms of political value. Perfect target. They are still getting as expected of women. Soon the day will come when Genji's voice trails off ominously. That's why you can't trust him. They will string you along and then kill you just like they kill me. You will end up like just like me. Oh, hell no. I can't stop myself from blurting it out. Hey, what the hell does that mean? You said it, not me. It's the best I can think of. So, you're not supposed to say something like that. Damn, so rude. Uh, where was I? Oh yeah, best feminist conspiracy. Stop it, stop! I lost you way, way back there somewhere. Somewhere around Finmist Infiltration. Do you want to follow? It's cool I have some crafts and stuff in my room. And puppets? Like puppets? No puppets. You don't like puppets? Okay, crafts are still cool though, right? He speaks energetically, responding almost before I'm done talking. Moving his hands in an animated way as he continues to rant off. This is too strange. I had him pegged as relatively normal, but it's clear that I was wrong. Something on your mind, dude. Ah, uh, just thinking about what it's like to be the last sane man in an insane world. Genji frowns, looking deeply upset. You mean that's you? That can't be, because I'm the last sane man in an insane world. That's my dream, you can't just steal a man's dream. What the hell, that can't be the who last sane man it would invalidate the whole last part. And that part's kind of important. There could only be one, like in that foreign film where there could only be one. And in the end, there was only one dude left, because that was the point. I've never seen anyone talk so hatefully and so defensively about absolutely nothing before. Anyway, if you wait here, I can get my crafts. I also have a list of the other dark and complex conspiracy about the school holds. A single ass. Quick, switch mine out if you wait. Be a pal. I'm going to go to bed now. It's three blue eggs. I don't sound like an algae, but whatever. I like you. You seem like a cool dude. Most people don't understand what I'm talking about when I try to explain it back to feminist conspiracy to them. Denial's a terrible thing. Later. He claps me on the back and then vanishes into his room so quickly and quietly it's like he didn't even open the door, but instead walked right through it like he was. I don't know if I can follow you, just what just happened, so I give up and just go to my room and kick it off my shoe before falling face first into bed. It takes me some time to relax and get up so I can get started on the homework. It's because the sheets are cool and comforting against my cheeks that it feels good just lying there with my eyes closed. The school is like some kind of bizarre and surreal island. It's isolated on top of a mountain, and each person is stranger than the last. Isolated on top of Manning. Well, it's obviously in the countryside, but... I mean, like, how far up a mountain is it exactly? Is it really a mountain, or is it just a hill, or what? I don't know. Well, it says a mountain, so it must be a mountain. I just can't seem to fit in. What irony, one would think that fitting in a place that's made for people who are unfit for anywhere else would be easy. Maybe I'm trying too hard. Although I say that, it doesn't help take the edge off. The words are left echoing off my empty walls. I guess it's not as bad as I expected, though. This place is... a small school and less a hospital pretending it's school than I thought it would be. If nothing else, the scenery is beautiful. Open one eye, seeing the school books and bottles of bills arranged side by side on my desktop. Maybe this place is too much like a normal school after all. Do -do 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 